Hello everyone and welcome back to another instalment of our Portuguese barn conversion series. I'm not sure if this video is coming out on a Wednesday or a Sunday, but it's clear to say you guys are really enjoying two videos a week. And as usual, there's a lot of stuff happening in this video. As you can tell, I don't know if you'll be able to thunder. hear that, but there's thunder right now. The weather's been pretty crazy, but there's a lot to see this week. We're the indie project B and Theo and we've been living and travelling the world in vans for the past six years. We're currently renovating an abandoned stone barn in Portugal to turn into a beautiful tiny home for us and our cats Gingy Bear and Fernando. Follow our journey from the very beginning as we document the whole process of creating an off-grid home. Good afternoon everybody. We are currently in our favourite car park in Castelo Branco. And I can tell you, it's too warm to be wearing this beanie. But it was a really miserable morning and it's been raining for the past couple of days. So we thought we'd come into Castello to pick up some building supplies so we can get on with some work inside the barn, which we're very excited about. The truck's parked there. And while we're here, we thought we'd do some washing of our clothes because they have washers and dryers here, which is very useful. nice to be able to have fresh clothes because it's been raining I haven't been able to do any hand washing and get the clothes drying outside so it made sense to just wash it all here get it all dried and then when we get home we've got lovely clean clothes to wear again that's all done now And while B's been doing all the washing and drying, I've been chilling on the back of the truck, getting a few funny looks from passers-by, but it's actually really comfortable on here. So that is why I sit here. And it's a beautiful day, although it's cloudy, it's really warm. And I've just ordered a Pizza Hut delivery to this exact parking spot. So fingers crossed it turns up soon because we're both very hungry. I think the reason we're so comfortable about just sitting in the back of the truck in a random car park is from our van life days. I'm just curious, do you reckon they're going to be able to find us as easily as they found us last time? Our truck's pretty noticeable. It is. Um, It'll hoping... probably be the same guy as He's well. probably going to be like, what are you doing? Like going to a different supermarket and ordering a pizza every week? <laughs> <laughs> We just got the pizza delivered to the car park. The guy did a few laps and then figured out it was actually us. It must be quite difficult when there's just a pinpoint in a car park full of cars, but we're gonna go somewhere now to eat it. Starts like a chunk. You probably think we're addicted to pizza and that's because we are. Pizza is that one meal that never gets old. Pizza Always. is life. Pizza is life. Honestly, I think we actually have a t-shirt that says that on it because pizza is just the best. parked up on the quietest place in the industrial estate that we know of. And the most picturesque I've got to say. Look at that rock formation behind you. And the wildflowers. <laughs> and check out that pizza. Doesn't it look good? Ooh. And this might have to become a feature where we drive around <laughs> Portugal and test out different pizza places. That sounds good to me. I've demolished a pizza and just been into a store to pick up the supplies that I needed. I managed to get some Devo tape. I've needed this for a long time. 
and I got some more storage for the barn so we can keep everything nice and tidy. We've been driving all the way through Castello Branco and we've been having a lot of people turn their heads because we're squeaking and it's quite loud. And what's happening is the belt keeps coming loose. So it's the alternator tensioner, the bolt in there isn't tightening. The thread that it goes into is non-existent. So I've just been into the store and I brought a bolt to go on the end of it and I'm hoping this will stop the tensioner from slipping. I don't know if it will or not. And maybe it had a bolt on before that's come off and that's why we're having a problem, but I don't think so. I think it's literally a bolt that just goes into a piece of metal that's threaded. Do you mean you've just got a nut? So I've got a nut. <laughs> you just called it a bolt? Like well, what? you know what I mean. So I'm gonna try and screw this on and tighten it up. Stop it flapping around. And stop the belt coming up. Like it's literally coming off, it's that flappy. <laughs> so I've just tightened the tensioner or moved it to the right. And if I try and tighten this on, we might be onto a winner. Fingers crossed. It's kind of humiliating driving around with a screaming truck. It does. I don't know if you guys in the States or North America or anywhere else in the world know about the in-betweeners. <laughs> but the UK people will. And that's how we feel right now. Everyone's looking at us. It's not a good look. We're not trying to draw attention to ourselves. At least it's not a bright yellow sequenta. <laughs> There we go, that's nice and tight now. Talk about joyful. It's silent, no longer squeaking. We can drive around in peace. Well, we are back on the land and I'm fairly sure that the main reason you click to watch today's video is to see our finished concrete floor and don't you worry I'm heading down to the barn slash house right now to show you the end result. Before we show you guys the finished floor I just wanted to talk a little bit about the lengths we had to go to to block Fernando from going in the barn and ruining the floor because you know, if there was any holes or anything in the walls, you know he'd been there first thing, walking all over it, cement all over his paws, and uh, we didn't want that. So we barricaded it up with wood and massive stones, and it actually worked. Because this hole is for our um, this wastewater. Is, this is for our services to go through here. We've had a lot of questions about plumbing. I'll talk more about that when we get inside. We even had to block up the window, but we can take this out now and add a little bit of extra light into the barn which will be nice because we've got a lot of work to do inside from now on. I'm just going to leave you guys hanging a little bit and show you how lovely the ceiling is looking with the light bursting through the roof windows. But look! It's the concrete floor! <laughs> you can tell we're excited. <laughs> surface there's no bumps there's no dirt there's no random rock sticking out it's glory it looks a little bit like an ice rink at the moment <laughs> and it feels massive like look we've at got, us we're just dancing around each other we've got the small window <laughs> flooding light from there we've got light coming through there which is bouncing off the walls and the floor and then over here like we keep mentioning our door is currently being made right now and that is going to be one big massive window because you can see all that light flooding through and we're going to be able to have a nice view looking straight out. There's also a number of reasons why this concrete floor is so exciting. Firstly because it's a flat surface which means that when I have to do the rest of the sanding which is imminent on the roof I've got a wonderful flat space for the scaffold that I can just move around not have to worry about balancing in awkward angles and stuff and, and that just makes me very excited I've got to say. Even just getting up on the mezzanine with the temporary ladder <laughs> and being able to put it on a flat surface <laughs> is an absolute joy. Before it's like putting blocks of wood, cement, 
any bricks or anything you could find to kind of prop it up. It really wasn't a good situation. I've it was got to say. Kind of makes you not want to be it in does, it. It's not until you don't have a flat surface that you realise how much you actually take for granted flat floors. And that sounds so basic, but it's totally true. <laughs> so a lot of you guys are probably wondering why we went for a concrete floor and didn't do our original plan of a floating timber floor. So to demonstrate what I'm talking about, I've got myself a block of wood and I'm next to the natural stone wall. It is natural stone, so it's never gonna be perfectly flat. But I've come here to demonstrate because the original builders who were on this project must have been on the wine when they got to this point because it starts to go a little bit wavy and a little bit crazy. And some of the stones, the difference in depth is like six inches or more. There's no way I can add six inches of plaster to level this all out. And we don't want this to be perfect, like a brand new apartment with plasterboard and and stuff like that. We want to keep it natural. We want to keep the character. We like it being a little bit wavy and that's exactly how we're going to keep it. So the original floor that we were going to put down is a floating timber floor. Basically, you just left all of that granite underneath, all of the rubble, and that's no problem at all. And you'd have the floor suspended above that, allowing air to flow underneath. The problem is because the stones are not flat, and stick out and when we plaster it won't be flat either the timber joist that was going to sit horizontally along here you can only get it as close as the biggest stone that sticks out which means when you come to lay the floorboards there's nothing here to keep the floorboards on so it meant the frame was getting really complicated and I would have had to add extensions and all sorts of different things and it would have been a bit of a nightmare, especially to level it on a non-level floor. So we went for this, uh, the concrete floor so that we've got a nice flat surface to work off. We're still gonna have a joist across the floor because on top of this, we're gonna have 25 millimeters of cork insulation. We've got cork insulation in the roof that was 60 millimeters. So it's gonna be a really nice insulated small house and then we're going to put our floorboards wooden floorboards on top of that and we'll have an air gap as well so air can flow around now i know that right now this is probably the tidiest we've ever had the barn but don't get used to it because it will not be staying tidy in fact right now we need to take everything down off the mezzanine so better get to it so small in comparison of the barn <laughs> like in the workshop we brought like two of these and they nearly filled the whole space and now i'm looking at this thinking maybe we should have bought another couple but maybe we should have just bought a massive one rather than a tiny one it's only to store all of the stuff that we use on a daily basis instead of taking it to the workshop and back in here every day which it really does make you not want to work because you wake up and you're like Okay, I've got to transport everything from there. So what we're trying to do is set up a little workshop within the, within the bar. He's climbing the wall. What are you doing? Now, do you remember how easy it was to do this? Do you reckon you could do it without my assistance? Come on. <laughs> Beautiful darling.
looking so neat and tidy and organised, but look how small the workshop area is in comparison to the building. It might be small, but it's necessary because I do not want this getting as messy as it was before this floor went no down. No way, no way. Never again. Let's make a pact to keep it tidy. Yeah? I'll do my best. You do your best. Okay, that's good enough. I'm just getting all of the sanding bits ready because I've still got sanding to do. Minimalist barn has turned into a scaffold palace. And it's a beautiful palace at that. <laughs> Why are you talking? Huh? It's time to get sanding. <laughs> I'm literally like, why is he trying to find himself? I don't want to sand. B it. has been putting off this sanding for so long. Not so long, like a day or two. But it's time, B, it's time. Are you sure there's nothing else we need to do before? <laughs> The sanding starts. I agree, it's a horrible job, but imagine when you've done it. I mean, just look at that. Look at the ridge beam there and how beautiful it looks compared to this side. Yes. It and is the lovely. whole roof ceiling is going to look like that. It is a very gratifying job because you can actually see the progress as you're going along, which is good. It's just okay, horrible. Okay, okay, stop talking and get on with it. Oh, fine. <laughs> just in case you guys thought I was serious, I was only having a laugh. He would never I'm talk to me like that. I'm semi-serious. <laughs> we do need to get this barn sanded so that we can move on to the oiling. And then I'm going to start preparing the walls for the plaster. So that's pretty exciting. But B is a very hard worker as well. So we're a good team <laughs> and we're going to get this done. It's just... You know when you get to a point in a project and it's been raining non-stop, it's quite hard to get that motivation to get back in it, but... I guarantee the next couple of days are going to be very productive. with a mask on but seeing as all these beams whoop, have been treated with chemical stuff it's wise but it's really hard to see because these get all sweaty and foggy and this gets all moisture built up and it dribbles down your chin it's not glamorous it's gross you look like a maniac <laughs> and my arms are feeling really jellified from because the sander is like vibrating through my hands so my hands are tingling and then my arms are shaking because i'm just literally holding them above my head so long and it's a, it's a horrible task and I can't wait for it to be done. I'm looking around and I've still got so much to do. Theo's like a dog with a bone with this piece of metal. Scared to pull it too hard in case I pull the whole wall down. <laughs> <laughs> this piece of metal goes all the way through the other side and it's bent on both sides so you can't just pull it out. And when we were tidying up, I just found an angle grinder. So finally, after years of this annoying me, and me like brushing off it. How many times have you literally brushed off it? Because that a couple of times, <laughs> not not loads, but once is enough. So I want to get rid of it, and it's stopping me filling in a hole on the other side of the wall. So it'll be a good job done. Gonna what go. happens though if you cut this end and the other end, and it still doesn't come out? 
You're just gonna that's like weird physics. It's gonna wedge it into the wall. But this yeah. would have been used to hang straw off for the animals to eat out of. And we're gonna be a little bit more civilized when we move into the barn, so we won't be needing it. Oh, what? We're gonna stop hanging our food off the wall. <laughs> How cool is that? That was the other side and I reckon we can use that in the building I as like an ornament or something. Yeah, definitely. Maybe I can hang my knickers off there. Yeah. I don't wear knickers. <laughs> done for the day and what a great feeling I'm absolutely knackered but it's a thankless task sanding the ceiling but it has to be done because unfortunately when they were building it a lot of dirty finger marks went on there and if I want to oil it I've got to sand it first and it'll look so much better trust me I really can't wait for it to be done but it is long it's arduous you get it in your eyes have to wear the mask because it's all been treated and it's not fun but the end result will be well worth it This is a job that I've been doing sporadically through the whole entire build. Just like I've been doing on the outside with the pointing around the stones and making it look really beautiful. I've got to do the same on the inside but it doesn't need to look nice. It's just to create an area for the plaster to go on to a nice surface. There's loads of gaps, there's loads of holes and they need filling in. And I really don't want to have to do the plastering myself. I had a plasterer lined up for a long time, but unfortunately he's fell through and I can't seem to find another plasterer. If you're a plasterer watching this and that's your day job and you want to fly out to our land literally and now, get on a plane in a few hours, send us a message, we'll put you up in a hotel and you can plaster our barn for us and uh, we'll make you lots of nice food as well. Yeah, that'd be amazing. <laughs> but yeah, it might be that I have to do the plastering myself. It's it's quite daunting, I'm not going to lie, it's quite daunting. A lot of these projects that I'm taking on, I've never done before. The way I'm slapping it in right now is kind of like I imagine you do it with the first coat of the plaster and then I'm just scratching it off so I've got something for the next layer to bond to. This isn't the first coat, this is literally just filling in the holes. But it's good practice and uh, yeah, it's, it's going pretty quickly actually, which is good.
reason I'm a little bit nervous about doing the plastering myself is because there's not a whole lot of information online about using lime plaster. If you're gonna do it with like plasterboard and standard plaster or plaster with cement, there's quite a lot of stuff out there on how to do it, but with lime, it seems like there's minimal stuff. I found a few YouTube channels that show you how to do it, but it's not necessarily using the same lime that I'm gonna be using because it's quite difficult to get that lime in Portugal. So the lime I'm using is hydraulic lime and this is the stuff I've been pointing in and doing all the other bits and pieces in. It will, it will mean nothing to most of you, but there's different types of lime and there's different hardnesses and different breathing qualities to different <laughs> strengths of lime. So it can get really technical. I think I'm going to use this hydraulic lime to do all the plaster with. That's what a lot of my friends have done here. Um, they've got plasterers to do it for them who is the plasterer I was gonna hire who can't do our place. So it's a bit frustrating. It's a little bit of a setback because he would be in here now getting it done. But yeah, we just have to work it out ourselves. Unless one of you guys wanna be flown out here to help us out. And you can see here, I've managed to fill in quite a few big holes over the last couple of hours. I've still got a long way to go, as you can see to the right hand side, but I'm making progress. And this sheet that I put down, this tarp, to catch the line was a very good idea because when you're slapping it on, it likes to fall on the floor. It's been a very productive couple of days but a very tiring one at that. And we're both covered in dust and I'm covered in mortar. It doesn't feel very nice. And we thought instead of jumping in the shower, why don't we come down to our favorite lake and just jump in there instead? Bee's decided to go in fully clothed. This is a two in one deal, a wash for me and the clothes, why not? I'm just gonna throw myself straight in, let's do it. No dilly dallying around, I'm just going for And there was it. a big roar of thunder. Oh my God. It's always so refreshing. Cold at first, but so good afterwards. So Bee's gone in fully clothed and I think I'm gonna go in butt naked because <laughs> I wanna wear these clothes tomorrow because I'm doing more work with mortar tomorrow. So I might as well get the same clothes dirty. The thunder's going off in the background and this location's really cool because I can hang my towel, if I can get it on, right there. So when I'm done, I grab the towel and hide my butt naked body. In you go. Oh. Oh. oh wow. All the way. Oh, it got deep. <laughs> it does get deep fast, doesn't it? Oh. <sighs> All right, guys. I think we're going to end the vlog there. Butt naked in a freezing cold lake. Feels good. <laughs> See you on the next video.